Hi, and welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series that we like to do at Mayfield Renewables where we talk about codes and standards as they relate to the solar and solar plus storage industries. Today, we're gonna to focus in on the 2023 NFPA 70B. Uh, that is the electrical, the standard for electrical equipment maintenance. And specifically, we're gonna look at chapter 30 and talk about grounding and bonding, how it relates to, to that standard. So we'll take a, look at the the table where grounding and bonding falls in in chapter 30 and then we're just going to talk about some fundamentals in terms of terminology where you're going to see these different conductors the different types of conductors that we're going to be using in our pv systems so first off let's talk about chapter 30 and this is new in 2023 70b and so you can see here uh, that number two there is where grounding and bonding falls in and really the test types when you go look at chapter 30 they talk about different test types um, uh, that they have for doing these but grounding and bonding you can see that there's some um, some call outs there for you know being able to do different types of uh, tests infrared thermography contact resistance uh, follow follow potential um, point to point current reading or torque devices so in a future video, we'll talk about some of those tests and how they are applied and, and what those different tools look like. Uh, but first and today, I just kind of want to focus in on different terminology for our grounding and bonding and making sure that we are all using those terms um, consistently. And then also just kind of showing a uh, application where, um, you know, where the equipment grounding conductors and things like that need to be installed. So first, let's just look at the kind of the big picture and understanding some of these terms that are being used a lot. And they are very, very similar. That's one of the things with grounding and bonding. These terms get very, very similar. And so there's small differences. And so you have to pick up on what those differences are in order to make sure that you're using the terms right. So going from left to right on this image you know we're looking at this egc so egc is equipment grounding conductor and really it's what it's doing is it's bonding all of the metal equipment together so you know it could be called it more maybe more aptly named would be an equipment bonding conductor but the name of it is equipment grounding conductor so we are grounding we are bonding all of that equipment together and we're using some sort of conductor to do it You'll notice here that, you know, we have a call out here talking about the module frames bonded to the EGC through a listed racking assembly. So there are ways of using a non wire type piece of metal in our case for PV systems using the racking system as that equipment grounding conductor. So you can actually use listed components to bond the modules to the racking system. So you're using a structural component with an electrical it's been tested electrically as well and you're making that bond module frame to the racking system and then you can use just bond that racking system back to the rest rest of the grounding system so that is a way of achieving an equipment grounding conductor in a non-wire type if you look in elect national electrical code they talk about other types of equipment grounding conductors when done properly you can actually use conduit as your equipment grounding conductor and things like that so it doesn't always have to be a wire but in our PV systems, we were very often using equipment grounding conductors of the wire type. Now you'll notice that that equipment grounding conductor connects the PV array back to the inverter. And then actually in our modern systems where we are using non-isolated inverters or transformerless inverters, the equipment grounding conductor actually continues out of the inverter on the AC side, continues through the disconnect and all the way over to wherever it is your point of interconnection is. So in this case, we're showing just a grid direct, you know, no, no uh, storage involved here, but this is a, a straight PV to inverter to the utility grid. And that EGC, that equipment grounding conductor, is continued all the way from that PV array all the way to, in this case, the main service panel where it's bonded to the grounding system. Now inside the main panel there, the main service panel, you'll notice we have a couple different things there. So we have a MBJ, we have a main bonding jumper. And what that is doing is we are bonding the grounding electrode, the grounding system, and the, in this case, the grounded conductor or the neutral, which is very often the case, what we're doing in our systems, our electrical systems here in the US. 
And so that MBJ is a can be of the wire type. It could be uh, different methods to bond the neutral to the earth or to the ground and being able to, to make that connection. So this will come up as well when you're doing supply side connections. You're gonna have to install a, a um, um, main bonding jumper in the new disconnect that you install. Um, so we talk about that in our article 705 code corners but that's a um, just a item that you would be having to be aware of um, in those types of situations. The other term that we're the other thing that we're showing you here is the GEC, and so that's the grounding electrode conductor, and so that is the conductor itself that is making that connection from that ground terminal inside the main service panel to the grounding electrode, and so we don't have it called out here, but the grounding electrode, that is whatever is in contact with the earth. It's the, um, it's the ground rod that was driven down into the earth, or it's the concrete encased electrode, or it's the, um, you know, whatever conductor that is buried in the earth that's making the actual contact with earth, and then sticking up to give us some way to connect a wire to it. So, the grounding electrode is what's actually down there in contact with the earth. Grounding electrode conductor is what's continuing that con connection up into the main service panel in this case. So those are all terms that you'll see quite a bit um, as it relates to ground fault, or excuse me, grounding and protection. We also have GFDI, so a ground fault detector interrupter, a integral part of inverters, and so that will be, you know, when you're starting to talk about ground faults, um, we have ground fault interrupters, and so we'll we'll talk a little bit about that, and we'll I'll kind of show you, kind of where that comes into play here in the next couple slides, uh, and then then just for completeness, the CT, the current transformer, um, when you are, you know, when you are using CTs to measure current on the on the metering system, that's what that's over there for. Not initially to do anything with the grounding, but just want to bring it up since it's on the on the slide there. Now, as it relates to our PV systems, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was the need for that equipment grounding conductor. And so our EGC, we need to make sure that we install that. And one of the things that can happen, it's not super common, but it, it can happen uh, in the case of something like this where maybe we have a ground mounted PV array and we have a uh, grounding electrode you know, at that ground mounted site, we connect the PV array to the to that grounding electrode. So we have we have grounded that PV array. That racking system is grounded, that's for sure. It is in contact with the earth. The problem that we have here is if we have a fault, what this would require is this would require that the earth, the actual earth, the dirt, were to be the thing that carries the current from that fault back to the utility to be able to complete the circuit in order to for that inverter for that ground fault detection device to be able to see that ground fault. So this is what you do not want to do. This is a, you know you're relying on the earth to carry that current that is earth as a you know poor conductor. And so we don't want to do that. What you absolutely have to do is make sure that we do what we showed in that first slide where we have the equipment grounding conductor running with those circuit conductors to the inverter itself. So this is a, a way of you know thinking about it is, yes, by all means, this, this racking system is grounded, it's in contact with the earth, but it is not bonded back to all of the other equipment. And that's a really key thing. We need to make sure that it's bonded back to the equipment as well. So kind of a high level thing, um, but just wanted to kind of point that out because it is something something that comes up uh, occasionally talking about people, talking with people about grounding versus bonding. So that is, um, you know, some of the fundamentals on grounding and bonding. This is a topic that we've worked with Megar on um, in an electrical testing standards guide uh, where we dig deep into these topics, you know, and we get into things like ground fault testing, uh, continuity testing, uh, and things like that. And so we will show you in a future video these tools in action and kind of, you know, how you would use them, how you would put them into um, per into practice. Um, but you have 
on here, you can see that uh, link to the Electrical Testing Standards Guide. I encourage you to take a look at it, uh, get in touch with us, uh, and you know, give us some input. Are trying to make this a guide that is for the industry, by the industry, and so love to get people's feedback on that. And then finally, in terms of our own classes, this is a you know example of some of the stuff that we do. We have classes of our own on solar and solar plus storage codes and standards. Uh, we have classes that are available online on demand. We are able to do classes that are uh, presented to organizations as a whole live and in person. So if that's something that's of interest to you, you know, love to talk to you about that as well and see if there's a um, way that we can work with you on delivering some educational resources for you and your team. And then finally, if you have any questions or comments about this or other topics, would love to hear from you. Uh, if you have a topic that you want to hear or see uh, covered in Code Corner, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Let us know. Uh, always happy to to talk with folks and hear what you know questions that they have out there. So, thanks again, and we'll see you soon.